Hello everyone, my name is Rachel McGarrell and I'm a Beef and Sheep Advisor with Caffrey. Today I would like to talk to you about worm control in lambs, the use of faecal egg counting and the practicality <coughs> around dosing. Worm control in your flock is essential for good growth rates in lambs. A heavy worm burden will result in a check in growth rate and will lead to a significant reduction in performance, while also increasing the amount of time required for lambs to remain on the farm to reach slaughter weight. When we think about sources of infection for this year's lamb crop, we need to consider where the worm larvae come from, and there are three main sources of infection. These are overwintered larvae, eggs from ewes with a worm burden, eggs from lambs with a worm burden. Matadiris is a big risk early in the season. The infective larval stage is very resilient and can survive low temperatures over the winter on pasture still within the egg. After a period of cold exposure, the larva hatches once the maximum environmental temperature exceeds 10 degrees over a period of several days. There will of course be variation from farm to farm and even from field to field. You should assess the risk based on the history of the field. For example, if you had lambs grazing pasture in the latter end of the season in 2019, then there is a high chance that this pasture is a risk to young grazing lambs now. Or if a peak hatch is expected and lambs are grazing contaminated pastures, they will expect be exposed to a significant challenge. It is recommended that the sustainable control of parasites, SCOPS protocols and guidance are followed with regard to the SCOPS forecast for nematodirus risk through the early grazing period. The SCOPS forecast is a really useful management tool. Each dot on the map represents a weller station. Choose the dot that is closest to your farm and zoom in to get information related to your area. The forecast predicts the hatch date for nematodirus based on the temperature data from around 140 weather stations throughout the UK. This should be used in conjunction with grazing history to assess the risk of nematodirus infection in your lambs. In conjunction with the SCOPS forecast, ask yourself the following questions. Are the lambs old enough to be eating a substantial amount of grass? Are different aged groups of lambs being mixed together? How do your lambs look? Are they clean? Are they thriving? And what is the previous grazing history of the field they are in? For example, low risk pasture would be a field that only grazed cattle last year. Moving on to looking at using faecal egg counts. A faecal egg count, or a FEC, counts the number of worm eggs in the sheep faeces and is used to monitor the worm burden in sheep. The results are presented as eggs per gram, or EPG, and the number of eggs is an indication of the number of adult worms in the gut of the sheep. Faecal egg counting is particularly important throughout the grazing season. Firstly, to determine if a treatment is necessary, and if so, it can be used to test how well a particular group of worming products is working within your flock. Regular monitoring combined with the use of FEC can help to ensure that we are preventing the damage that worms can cause to lambs. It is, however, very important to remember that faecal egg counting is a tool to help management and definitely not to replace it. The machine is an internet connected, image based diagnostic platform that is scientifically validated to conduct faecal egg counts. With my own business development sheep groups, I have done a considerable amount of testing using the FECPAC GT. It was demonstrated to members at a meeting last May and was used throughout the 2019 season to monitor worm burdens across flocks. Using this method allowed farmers to make an informed decision with regard to the need to dose. Firstly, you need a sample. If you're taking a mob average, then you need one scoop of dung from at least 25 to 30 different samples. You should use the scoop that's provided in the kit. If it's an individual sample, then you should pick up the whole sample from that animal. The samples are ideally placed into a Ziploc bag with all of the air squeezed out. The kit itself contains a number of components. On the picture on the screen, you will see a number of pieces of equipment that are used in sequence throughout the testing process. Moving on to the sampling procedure itself. Firstly, tear the bag and weigh the sample. Then add the measured water. For sheep, the ratio was 1 to 3, i.e. 1 gram of dung to 3 mils of water. This is then mixed into a slurry-like consistency still within the sample bag as shown on the screen. You should note the time and the sample ID in the sedimenter and pour slurry to the slurry line again as shown. 
Next, add water to the water line in the sedimenter. Attach the lid and invert to mix. Let this stand for at least 30 minutes or longer if you can. When the required time has elapsed, pour out the mixture from side A, again shown on the screen, to the flush line. Next, add the saline to the sheep saline line on the sedimenter. Pour the mixture from side B of the sedimenter into the cylinder, then attach the lid with the filters. Invert the cylinder three times, making sure that the seal is tight first. Using the pipette provided, pipette the sample into the cassette's first well. Invert the cylinder, then fill the second well. Ensure the wells are filled correctly, or this will affect the analysis of your sample. Insert the cassette into the microwave to take the sample images. This has replaced the old microscope method. The samples are then uploaded to the lab using a Wi-Fi connection. On the screen, you can see a sample markup image that's ready for analysis. Results are usually issued in under one hour. On the screen, you can see a markup of a sample image. This is what the lab will see when the image is uploaded, and this is what will be used for analysis. Moving on to interpreting the result. Low counts of less than 200 eggs per gram are unlikely to require treatment at that time. If you find medium counts, that will be between 200 and 500 eggs per gram. These lambs may need treatment, but consider other factors such as feed level and quality, movement of the stock and management events such as weaning. High counts will be eggs per gram greater than 500. This is a sufficient worm burden that has been detected and is likely to cause significant harm. When it comes to carrying out the actual dosing, then don't forget the practicalities. Dose your animals based on weight. Do this by weighing a sample of the grip and then set the dose rate based on the heaviest animals in the grip. If there's a wide range of weights, consider splitting the grip and weighing the heaviest in each grip. Underestimation of weight is a big problem and because of this, underdosing occurs frequently on farms. Ensure that the dosing technique is correct and make sure the sheep is adequately restrained. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions with regard to the amount that should be used. Ensure that your drenching gun is working correctly by calibrating the gun before each use. You should use narrow spectrum treatments wherever possible to avoid unnecessary exposure to a wormer. And you should not mix anthelmintics with other products. If in doubt or you have concerns about the health of your flock, then veterinary advice should be sought immediately. Finally, in the current COVID-19 situation, you should continue to plan ahead with your supplies for all inputs required on the farm. Remember to follow social distancing guidelines to all visitors to the farm and maintain good hand washing practice. For further information, you should contact your local Caffrey Beef and Sheep Advisor or visit caffrey.ac.uk.